Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Well, this month, October, is a special month. It's called Black History Month. Now, you might have already been thinking about this in your classes or with your families, and you might have noticed some things on TV. So this morning, I'll share my screen <clears throat> and to think about Black History Month and what we can find out. Okay. So in a few minutes, we're going to find out about this gentleman here. I don't know whether you recognise him, Nelson Mandela. First of all, what is Black History Month? Well, it's a time set aside each year to celebrate the achievements of black men and women in the past and today. So that might be people who have done something special in their work, in their job, their career, it might be in politics or in nursing or healthcare, it might be a sports person, it might be a religious leader, it might be just everyday people going about their business in a special way. So you might think, well, why do we have Black History Month? Well, unfortunately, throughout history, people have been treated differently because of the colour of their skin. Black people were not seen as equal and were not treated in the same way as white people. For example, they had to sit in different seats on a bus or in public places like a cinema. And it's not long ago since this happened. Now, lots of people knew that this was wrong and they wanted things to change. Just imagine if, imagine if you couldn't sit next to someone on the bus because they had different coloured skin to you. Now I find this quite hard to imagine because you probably know that my husband is black and my children have brown skin. So quite a few years ago, but not that many, if we'd been going out as a family, we wouldn't have been able to sit together on a bus. And even we would have had to go to different toilets. There's a picture of a lady there pointing to a toilet that said whites only. So imagine if you couldn't go to the same shops as your next door neighbour. Or imagine if you couldn't go to school with the person sat next to you because their skin was a different colour to you. It's hard for us to imagine that now, isn't it? So Black History Month is an opportunity to celebrate the contributions and the achievements of black people throughout history. These contributions and achievements were often not part of the history curriculum taught in schools in the past. So in 1926, in America, there was a man called Carter G. Woodson, and he introduced a Black History Week because he thought it was important that children were taught about all kinds of different people and their contribution to history. And later on, this turned into Black History Month, which is celebrated in America every February. And in 1987, we had our black, first Black History Month in the UK, and we celebrate it every October. So, Black History Month is a chance to think about some contributions of people throughout history who've made a real difference to the lives of others. So, when I was at school, we found out about a very famous nurse called Florence Nightingale. I'm sure you've heard of Florence Nightingale. And all that she did during the Crimean War to help the soldiers. But at roughly the same time, there was a lady called Mary Seacole. And she also went to help the soldiers in the Crimean War. Now, we think about Mary Seacole at school now, don't we? So, you might have heard about her when you did your history project. Because of all her efforts, the soldiers called her Mother Seacole. And she comforted them and nursed them back to health and was always there if they needed clothes, blankets and kindness. And she made a huge contribution to the improvements of nursing. Well, you might have also heard about Rosa Parks. She was born in America and in a child, she was, as a child, she was used to having to sit at the back of a bus because she had black skin. But she didn't think that this was fair. One day on a bus, when she was an adult, she refused to give her seat to a white person just because she was black. Then she was arrested by the police and fined for breaking the rules. But other black people, and some white people as well, agreed with Rosa. They didn't think it was fair that people had to sit in different seats just because of the colour of their skin. And they made this clear to the American government. So you can see the bus, the kind of bus that she would have ridden on, 
And after she was arrested, lots of people boycotted the bus service. That means they said, we're not going to use it. So hundreds of people, probably thousands of people, walked to work or to school or to wherever they were going instead of using the buses. And that sent a clear message to the American government. And eventually, they changed the rule and black people no longer had to sit in a separate section of the bus or give up their seat to someone just because of the colour of their skin. Now we know sometimes it's polite to give up our seat, isn't it? Maybe somebody who needs a seat more than us. And that's not what Rosa Parks was talking about. If somebody had got on the bus who maybe had a disability and needed to sit down to rest their legs, or maybe somebody who was older, she wouldn't have minded giving up her seat then. It was simply because of the colour of her skin sometimes she was asked to give up her seat. And you can see there's a sign at the bottom there. It's spelt coloured in the American way. It says seated in the rear. So those kind of signs were on buses, and transport throughout America at that time. There's a little link, I'll just highlight it there, in blue. And I'm hoping that if you haven't seen it already, after this little worship time, you will be able to click on that link or your teacher will be able to find that link and you can watch a little film, about 10 minutes long, with Rosa Parks or an actress um, being Rosa Parks telling you about her experiences. Now we saw Man Nelson Mandela on the front slide, didn't we? Nelson Mandela was the first black South African president. He spent 27 years in prison. He was trying to change things so that they were equal for both black and white people. Many people around the world thought he was a hero and they respected him for his courage and wisdom in bringing people together and living in peace. And he had made a very famous speech called I Have a Dream. Perhaps you could look up the whole speech if you're in year five or six, maybe. But one of the famous parts of the speech is written below here. It says, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. And that's what we hope is true today, isn't it? We've read a lot of parables recently, we've heard them, we've seen them in little film clips, we've thought about the meanings of parables and the meaning of lots of them is all about the kingdom of God being an equal place for everybody isn't it, where everyone is valued equally. So at this time it's really important for us to think about the way in which we make our communities equal for everyone and value everyone. So just going to finish with a prayer and then hopefully you can watch the Rosa Parks film. Let's get ourselves ready for prayer. Gracious and loving God, let us remember that you call us to oneness, unity and love. We are all your children and you love each of us equally. We thank you for welcoming us just as we are. We pray that you will help us to treat everyone equally and with respect. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So enjoy the film if you've got time to watch it now. If you're watching at home and you can't follow the link then you can just go to the BBC and Rosa Parks and you'll be able to find the film if you search for it. Have a good day and I'll see you later.